what's going on guys it is coach Kelly and yes I'm sitting up in bed I am actually getting ready to read you guys a little bit of a bedtime story okay so last week I put up a couple of videos about building your business tips and customer dues okay um, the other part to the customer dues good customer service and building business and things like that was the customer service don'ts okay so there are a couple of tips from that book that I told you about. Smile more, um, sell more. And so I needed to go back through and discuss the don'ts from that book. So just a little stat for you, statistic. 62% um, of complaints are posted through social media. What that is saying is basically if you go to a restaurant and the service is terrible, the food is terrible, the place is dirty, whatever. If you have a bad experience, you are 62% more likely to post about that on social media than you would be to say maybe post about a positive experience. Um, and you're going to share this complaint with at least 40 to 50 people, right? So the point is... You want to make sure that you're offering your customers really good customer service because the last thing you want to happen is for them to be blasting it all over Facebook or Twitter about how horrible of a coach you are, about, you know, you didn't say what you, you know, promised you were going to do and things like that. You want to make sure that, you know, you're always treating your customers like they're royalty, okay? Um, so this even says that if, you know, down the road, like let's just say six months down the road you see somebody that is talking about going to the same restaurant and then you're like oh my god no don't go there I went there six months ago the experience was awful and it doesn't even matter what changes that restaurant might have made to correct the issues because maybe other people had complained and they remedied the issues and now the restaurant is absolutely amazing but these people are going to go on your word like oh i'm not going there because I, you know you said that you went there and that place is terrible and i trust you and so i don't want to go have a terrible experience so i'm just not going to go all right so you got to be really careful with making sure that you're treating your customers like royalty so that they become repeat customers okay um whenever you're talking to somebody posting about anything um don't lack enthusiasm or seem like you're uninterested don't be negative. Okay, there's a social media boot camp that was put up in Team Rockstar Coaches Group. Um, you can click on it in files if you need to go back and refer to that again. Um, basically, they discuss do's and don'ts using your social media. You always want to be positive. You always want to be, you know, being happy. Even though there's days where we're having just a really crap day. And you all know I had a pretty crap day on Monday finding out about my dad's diagnosis, you know. But that's not to say that just because you're not posting, posting negative drama that you can't be real. Okay, my dad's diagnosis is a real life event that somebody might be able to relate to. Okay, and they want to offer me support. Just like if you see somebody else post, hey, my dad was diagnosed with cancer today. You want to offer them some um, support. So you want to be real, but you want to try to keep the negativity to a minimum. Somebody makes you mad in traffic, you don't want to call them out, oh my gosh, this idiot just cut me off in traffic and made me miss my turn. You don't want to post stuff like that anymore. You are your storefront. Your social media pages are your storefront. So think about this. If you're out shopping and you go to a store and you see the place is just a complete disaster, there's filth everywhere, you're not going to walk in there. You're going to walk in, take one look around and be like, I'm out of here. I'm going someplace else you got to look at your social media pages the same way. If you're airing out your dirty laundry for all the world to see, your customers are going to see that and they're going to they're going to bounce. They're not going to want to deal with that. They don't want they have enough of their own drama, they don't want to deal with their own. So be very choosy about what you're posting on your social media if you're using this as your DMO, your daily method of operation. If you are using social media to promote your business, then you want to make sure your storefront is clean. You also want to make sure that you're a product of the product. So if you're talking about product, but you're not using that product yourself, then people are going to really have a hard time trusting you. It's like if I go into a haircut place, I love my analogies, I'm sorry. If I go into a haircut place and I sit down in a person's chair and her hair is a disaster, do you really think I'm going to sit my butt in that chair and let her work on my hair? No. No. So be a product of the product, but don't lack enthusiasm. 
Um, when somebody's talking to you, if you're having a sit-down client meeting with somebody, I went to this one lady's house before, and I was on a very limited time schedule, and we were talking about everything under the sun except the whole reason for me being there. I was totally interested in her conversation, but I was more focused on the time, and so that was kind of a learning lesson for me because I didn't want to seem uninterested in her conversation. I didn't want to seem like I was just there for business, so that was a learning experience for me to make sure that I allow more time for my, um, my sit-down meetings with people so that I can get down you know, to a personal level with them. So I had to fake the funk and be a little, you know, enthusiastic, even though in the back of my head, I'm like, oh my God, I have 10 million things to do today. I want to get out of here. But at the end of the day, she ended up being a client. So if I'd lacked enthusiasm or was cutting her off in any way, shape or form, do you think I would have gotten the sale? No. Um, don't underestimate the power of clothing and grooming. Always be professional. This, I know, is not the most professional way, but um, we are coaches and we work from home, and so a lot of time this is our office space. We are promoting a home-based business for other people that might be interested in joining your team, and so you want to let them know in this particular situation that, hey, look, I am working from home. I am in my bed with my favorite blanket, my hair's up, and I am working. This is awesome. Working from home rules. Yes, don't you want to do this too? You know, so, but when you're actually out there, you know, and you're out at the market and you're wanting to hand out buttons or business card, make sure you're presentable, you know, um, be professional. If you're going to do a home party, you want to dress the part. Um, my last party, I was actually in workout gear because the plan for that party was for us to actually work out. We ended up not working out, but I was dressed for the part. So if we weren't planning on working out, then I would have been in a more appropriate attire. So just keep that in mind too whenever you're planning on doing parties, which if you go into Team Rockstar Coaches Group today, you will see that Colleen Maycumber just posted a really awesome shake party list if you want to host a shake party and it talks about all of the little hostess incentives and everything else. So check that out in Team Rockstar Coaches Group. Um, amazing stuff, but be professional. Um, let's see. Don't make them wait. If you tell them that you're going to call them on Sunday at 6 o'clock, call them on Sunday at 6 o'clock. If you have something legitimate that comes up and you cannot call them at 6 o'clock, let them know in advance and try to reschedule, okay? We are all only human. Everybody that knows you is going to know that you're a mom, you're a wife, you got school, you got work, and things change. But don't keep them waiting, okay? Try to schedule it before your appointment, if at all possible, so that they're actually getting the information earlier rather than later. So try not to make them wait. I always have a 24-hour turnaround time if somebody calls me or messages me or something like that. I'm like, I will get to you by the end of the day or I will get to you by tomorrow. Or a lot of times I just try to go ahead and answer the question right on the spot. But sometimes we all get wrapped up in our own things. So just try not to make people wait. Um, don't put them on hold on a call or ask if it's okay. Or if you do have to put somebody on hold legitimately, then ask them if it's okay first. Don't just say, hey, hang on, I get another call. You know, if you're on a call with somebody um, and there's another call coming and you know that you absolutely have to take it. Hey, I am so sorry to interrupt. I have to take this call. It's my son. I'm waiting for him to find out uh, what time I need to pick him up. Do you mind if I just take this call really fast and I promise I'll be right back? Don't go away. And if they say, yeah, sure, girl, no problem. Absolutely. If they sound irritated, then you're going to have to make a judgment call and be like, how important is it that I answer this call? Or can I finish up what I'm saying right now and then call that person back? Whatever you got to do, it's a judgment call for you. But if you have to put somebody on hold, just make sure you ask their permission first. Um, here's a little quote I like by uh, um, Mary Kay Cosmetics, which unfortunately I'm not a Mary Kay Cosmetics customer, but I like this quote. No matter how busy you are, you must take the time to make the other person feel important. I believe in that. You gotta make the other person feel important. Otherwise, they're gonna take their business someplace else because they're gonna feel like you're just looking at them like they're a dollar sign. So you don't ever want people to feel like they're just a dollar sign for you. Um, don't under promise or over deliver. Always err on the side of caution. And basically what I take from that is, um, what would be a perfect example for that one? Um, don't give more information than what they're asking for because you don't want to overwhelm people. But don't underestimate, you know, by assuming anything either. So um, if you're saying that, hey, um, 
you know, in two weeks, you're going to lose 20 pounds. That's over delivering. You don't ever want to guarantee anybody anything and then don't under promise. Get them hyped up enough to understand that in this particular business, they could very well lose 20 pounds if they are consistent with their plan and they stick to it and, um, you know, they follow the guidelines in the wellness plan, then you can essentially, you know, let them know, hey, the, pro- the products are going to work. So believe in your products, stand by your products, teach them how to use the products correctly, and then you won't be under-promising or over-delivering. Um, don't think of selling as being pushy. Think of it as helping the customer by teaching them the benefits. They have to come to you, they have come to you to solve a problem, so they want you to solve a problem. Some people, a lot of people that come to us, they have tried everything. Um, like for me, I tried like a Weight Watchers program years ago. I followed that plan to the absolute letter and didn't lose a single pound, not one. I couldn't understand it. Whereas my best friend, she followed the plan and she lost a ton of weight. It worked for her, it didn't work for me. I'll never understand why. Um, so a lot of times by the time people get to you, they've already tried so many other things that they are coming to you out of, I've tried everything else, I'm going to try this. So you don't want to let that person down. You want to tell them, hey, this is not a diet. It's not a miracle. You have to do X, Y, Z, blah, 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 in order for it to work. So I will coach you through this. I will stay in touch with you. I'll add you to the Rockstar Wellness Group. I'll add you to 100% Mindset Group. Whatever it takes, we're going to get you through this. Um, but they're coming to you because they need your help. They need our help more than we need theirs, okay? So they're trusting you. They're confiding in you. They're putting themselves out there. They're putting themselves out there on a limb. A lot of our clients are our close personal friends and family. The last thing you want to do is let somebody down because now the relationship suffers. Hey, I tried the whole Herbalife stuff that you told me and it didn't work for me and now I don't want to be your friend anymore. You'll never want to be in that position, okay? Um, but I, I am very blunt with people. Hey, if you're not using and you're not following then that's that's on you. I mean, I can't make you take the product. All I can tell you is if you do A, B, C, and D, this is what your results should be. I'm living proof that it works. So I follow the plan. If you follow the plan, it'll work for you too. All right. Um, don't say too much. Don't overload them with a bunch of information in the initial setting. Sit down with them about the program. You want to go baby steps. Tell them the basics. And I uploaded in this group a couple of days ago the basic introduction that I send out to just about everybody just to kind of like reel them in with a little bit of information. And then I follow up um, with the Herbalife Customer Care Packet, which is also in this group, um, and give them a day or two to sift through that. And then I follow up with them. And then I give them the opportunity to ask me questions and then I answer those specific questions. And the questions are never going to stop. I mean, I have a lady that's been on Herbalife for four months right now, and she was texting me today asking me some questions, okay? So the questions are never going to stop, but you don't want to give them all of the answers on the first day because it's going to be mind kill, and they're going to be like, oh, hold on, hang on, I got to decompress here, I can't handle all of this. Just start with the basics, okay? Basics is a quick start program. Your three core products and the tea. That's where you want to start with just about everybody. Okay, 100% nutrition, tea for energy, and metabolic boosting. Those are your basics. Start there, and then you can work on other things after a few weeks. Um, Don't be unable to relate to the customers because you know too much compared to them. Use layman's terms, okay? Um, They're not going to know what a lot of stuff is. You can sit there and be like, oh, well, the tea has this and this and this and this and this in it and you use all these big fancy words that are on the labels and they're like what the heck are you talking about you just want to say shake nutrition cell activator i call it pac-man it reels it in you want to use layman's terms with them so that they understand it better okay don't try to kill them with science and all this other stuff if they want to know the science behind it they can go onto your website and they can read the actual labels and everything themselves okay um let's see and make sure I didn't skip a few things. Do you like a little bedtime story? Um, okay, the six P's. Six P's of success. Proper preparation prevents pathetically poor performance. 
That means if you are going to be scheduling a phone call with somebody, a sit down with somebody, if you're going to have a shake party, if you're going to put anything on Facebook or social media to talk about your products, make sure you are prepared. So if somebody asks you a question, you have the answer. Or at least if you don't know the exact answer, you have a pretty good idea and you can say, you know what, here's the generalized answer to your question. If you want more information, let me know and I'll be happy to break out my laptop and I'll get you the more formal answer, but basically here's the gist. Now that's not to say that you have to memorize every single product that Herbalife has. What I'm saying is, is if you are focusing on aloe in a conversation, you want to try to sell aloe to people because you know of its amazing digestive qualities and this and that. You want to make sure you know enough about the aloe before you start talking about it. Um, and if you're going to go to a shake party, make sure you're prepared. You have all of your materials presentable so that it's easy to get to and you're not, you know, sifting through papers everywhere and you're trying to find something. Just make sure you're organized. Um, let's see. Dun, dun, dun. Whenever somebody inquires and then goes on and um, most of you already know this, but some of you don't. Whenever somebody goes on to your GoOverLife.com website and creates a new customer account, Herbalife is going to send you an email and you have to actually accept that lead before that lead can actually go on and shop. So you need to check your email constantly, okay? Most of us have smartphones nowadays. What I did is I set up an entirely separate Gmail account, okay, my herbabot at gmail.com. That way there, it's linked to my GoHerbalife website, so whenever somebody goes on that website, I get a different notica- notification. It's got a different sound, so when it comes through my phone, I'm like, oh, that's an Herbabot email. I need to go ahead and check that one right now as compared to my personal Gmail, which I use both for my business, but Herbabod at Gmail is specifically linked to my GoHerbalife website, so whenever I get a customer notification, a lead, Um, a promotion notification or anything that's considered important and needs my immediate attention goes to that email. So if you need to, for your business, set up a separate email that's different from your personal so that you'll get notified right away. The last thing you want is for somebody to be on a computer and they're ready right now to order. And then they get that little thing. Oh, you have to wait to be accepted by your coach, Kelly Polk. Oh, crap. Two o'clock in the morning. Kelly Polk is asleep right now because I'm on East Coast time and I want to order my stuff and now I have to wait until tomorrow. So one thing that I do is I let people know, hey, if you go on my website, let me know in advance when you plan on going on so that I can be on the lookout for accepting the lead. Otherwise, it will not allow you to go on there or shop. So this is one thing I try to let people know um, that it will not let you do that until I accept. Let's see always follow up after a bit because they might not order right then and there. They might just be digging around. They want to check out prices and some of the other products and stuff. So always after you get that lead, wait a day or two and then follow up them. Hey, I saw that you were on my website the other day. Did you have any questions that I can answer for you? Do you want me to help customize a plan for you? Blah, 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 blah. Um, Always know your products. Always mail out the Herbalife customer care packet after an order. Um, Share testimonials with people, not just your own, but um, other people's. You can go on Herbalife.com and you can click on testimonials and there's tons of them in there. Um, Anticipate objections. People might say, oh, well, you know, I really want to do this stuff, but I can't wait until Christmas. Say, you know, did you realize that you can do Herbalife for, you know, less than $3 a day for two meals a day? I mean, when you break that down, girl, you're saving money at the grocery store because you're not going to buy all this unhealthy stuff to eat. So when you put it to them like that, anticipate the objections, then they don't really have anything to say to turn you down. So people have legitimate reasons why they can't start today but just try to anticipate those objections. Um, Research your customer beforehand. You know, when somebody reaches out to you and sends a lead, kind of go on their page a little bit um, and see what kind of day-to-day lifestyle they could go on. Did they post what they ate for breakfast today or what they made for dinner last night? Take a look at their picture. How overweight do they look? You know, never assume. you know, but try to get some information from, from them before you actually sit down and go over a plan with them. Everybody has different needs. Um, if somebody has a food allergy, then know that they can't get the quick start kit as is because they need the allergen-free formula. You know, all these things we could talk about. Uh, how What I do for people that have allergies and they want the allergy-free formula one, but they want the quick start price, I work out a little bit something different for them. 
Um, here's a good quote by Oprah. Luck is preparation meeting opportunity. Okay, so you always have to be ready. And one thing that we talked about at our Boston training back in October um, was they said always have your like 60 second commercial ready for when you're in the elevator. If you're in the elevator and you're wearing my lose weight now, ask me how button or my I love Herbalife t-shirt or anything like that, have your 60 second commercial ready. Basically it's your why. Hey, I started Herbalife because I needed to lose weight. I started Herbalife because, and then you know, have your 60 second commercial. So it doesn't matter where you are, you are prepared and you'll say it so many times in the mirror practicing that becomes second nature to you, it becomes habit and becomes perfect every single time. So have your 60 second commercial ready for when somebody um, drops question at you. Um, so remember luck is preparation meeting opportunity. So you might just run into somebody in an elevator somewhere and they see you right and, hey I've heard about this Herbalife step what can you tell me about it oh my gosh it's so great you know I got on Herbalife you know 11 months ago because I gained 45 pounds after having all of these surgeries and I couldn't shed the weight I wasn't able to exercise because of my condition um blah 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 handicapped all this other stuff so I used Herbalife Nutri Herbalife's nutrition plan to lose all the weight and man I've gone from a size 14 down to a four can you believe it man I feel great I got so much energy so much energy you know my husband got on the products and he's lost 40 pounds get your 60 second commercial down okay all right let's see um here's just a couple of little quotes that I just wanted to share with you um complaints handle returns graciously don't take it personally and always apologize I'm sorry things didn't work out you're not going to make everybody happy um, some people are just not going to follow the plan and they're going to blame you even though you know that you've done everything possible and you know the products work. Some people, are, they're, they're just not in it, okay? They're just not. And so they're going to try to blame it on everything else. Don't try to argue with them. Don't try to say, oh, well, I saw that you ate Chick-fil-A yesterday. So, I mean, were you? can you really say that you were trying? If somebody close to you, like I called out a personal friend, I'm like, girl, I saw you with that plate of nachos last night. Don't sit here and try to tell me that my product didn't work. You didn't use the product, okay? You know, but you err on the side of caution. You don't really want to argue with people. Just say, I'm sorry things didn't work out. Whatever. Uh, turn complainers into advocates. Listen attentively. I'm sorry. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. And then try to find a solution and follow up. Um, let's see. When, uh, when written in Chinese, the word crisis is composed of two characters. One represents danger and the other opportunity. That was by John F. Kennedy. Um... Customers don't expect you to be perfect, but they do expect you to fix it. So, you know, everybody makes mistakes. If you make a mistake, apologize for it. Try to fix it. Don't just let it linger and don't just, like, ignore that person. That's the worst thing you can do is ignore somebody because what are they going to do? They're going to complain 62% of the time and they're going to put it on social media and then everybody else is going to know that you suck. So let's not ignore people. Um, going the extra mile is a powerful way to surprise and delight customers and build loyalty and respect for your business. So go going above and beyond. I give people out my personal cell phone number and say, hey, anytime, text me, call me, email, whatever. Um, somebody's having a really bad day, I go out of my way to try to lift them up, text them, call them hey girl I saw all over Facebook today you were really upset about something I just want to let you know that I'm here for you coaching doesn't have to just be about take your shake eat this not that it can be coaching somebody in life okay so if you go above that extra mile and you seem like you're interested in their day-to-day -day life as a person not just about what they're eating and buying from you girl oh my gosh girl you looked amazing in that shirt the other day oh you go um, wow, it's your kid's birthday. That's awesome. Wish them a happy birthday for me. You know, hope they have a great party. Good luck on your vacation. Take lots of pictures. Can't wait to see them when you get back. You know, anything. Go above the mile. Don't look at people at dollar signs. Most of the people that you're trying to sell to right now are people that you've developed a personal relationship with already. So you want to keep things personal and you want to keep that flow going. Um, when you enchant people... Your goal is not to make money from them or to get them to do what you want them to do, but to fill them up with great delight. That was from Guy Kawasaki. Kawasaki Ninja Motorcycles. Okay, so it's kind of going along with going above, um, going the extra mile and just being an all-around good person. Alright guys, so those are some of the don'ts. Okay, we will talk about this really quick. Um, this is my daily journal. This is one of a couple. Um, 
I participate in a lot of the teleconference calls, um, watch a lot of videos, take a lot of notes, talking with other coaches and things, you know, do's and don'ts. Um, but another thing that I do is I write down my 10, um, is my gratitude journal, 10 things every single day that I am grateful for. You know, and just try to keep myself inspired and keep myself uplifted. Even on bad days, I will write the things that I'm grateful for. So I encourage you to do this. Get a journal. Start taking notes. Training so that you can look back on this from time to time and be like, wow, look how much life has changed. Put your goals in there. You know, hey, by June 2015, my goal is to be global expansion team. And when my kids get out of school for the summer, I'm home with them. You know, put your goals in there so that you can look back and be like, wow, I, I made that goal. You know, I put World Team on my goals to make World Team by August. Well, just so happened I had a couple of months that were um, personally, I had a lot of things going on. My son is in the hospital. My husband's coming home from deployment. There's a, just a lot going on. And I, um, I didn't make World Team exactly when I wanted it to. But you know what? I started over. I got it. And I'm World Team now. Okay? So... Um, I actually have a bulletin board out of my hallway. Those of you that have been to my house have seen it at the top of my stairs outside my office. I have a, a board where I keep track of new customers and keeping track of, you know, my follow-ups with them and um, customers that were my customers and they seem like they've kind of like fallen off the block a little bit and trying to reel them back in, my discounted members, my new coaches, and then I have my goals. And every month I set a new goal and so for the longest time, for several months, I've had three strips of paper on there that said, you know, goal, when I get to um, supervisor, I'm going to go to a Boston training. Um, when I get to world team, I'm going to buy a new car. And when I get to global expansion team, we're going to Hawaii or whatever it is. Write out your goals and get your family involved with them. I had a conversation with my family just this week when I made world team. I saw that I was getting ready to make World Team, and so the night before I made World Team, I told my family, do you know what this means? This is what this means for us as a family, financially, and this is what this means for me personally. And for me to reach my next goal, I'm going to need to spend more time working, okay? And the sacrifices that we make with Mommy's time means that Mommy is earning more, and we can do more. So as a as a grateful gratitude and as a thank you to you guys for doing more chores around the house and letting mommy go in the office and close the door and making phone calls and maybe breaking some rules where I don't usually allow phones at the table but if I'm in the middle of a conversation with a customer and it's dinner time I'm like guys I'm gonna finish up this conversation okay and then I'm gonna and then I'm gonna put the phone down you know making the sacrifices that I need to make to be able to continue doing these amazing things for my family being able to hand my husband a check the other night to send him home for the holidays he hasn't been home in three years being able to finance that trip for him was an amazing and he had this big smile on his face and like just think the harder I work the more I make so if you guys help me out then I would like as a family when I get to global expansion team which means I'm gonna put in a lot of hours every week weekends I'm gonna have to work 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 everywhere but think about what that means, okay? So I asked each of my family members the other night, I said, I want each of you to think of something that we could do together as a family or maybe something that we could buy, maybe like a four-wheeler or a trip to Hawaii or just something. And I want everybody to think about that. And then every time you see mommy go in the office and you're like, man, I really wish mommy could, you know, not spend so much time in the office. Think about what this would mean for me personally and what it would mean for the family if I can get to that goal and I can be a stay-at-home mom and I can work from home when you guys are all out at school doing everything so I can get all of my work in during the day and come home and I'm all yours that's what I'm working towards right now okay so put your goals in perspective write them down figure out where you want to be next month where you want to be in six months and where you want to be in a year I did that I started in January of this year and I said by summer I want to be supervisor and by the fall, I want to be world team. I did it. I wrote up my goals, and I did it. And I wrote down my health goals, too. I wanted to be a certain size by a certain time, and I made sure I hit that goal. Okay? So, 
we're going to start having a lot more videos and I hope all of you downloaded the Zoom app so that we can figure out how to get you to reaching your goals. Okay, so I'm at my 30 minute meeting mark. All right, not all of us are available at the same time. So that's why I do these little video recordings so you can stop and pause and go back to wherever you need to leave off if you get interrupted. Okay, good stuff. Talk to you guys soon. Have a good night. Bye.